So thank you for joining us. Uh, are you guys ready to get into the word? Yeah. Uh, I was telling my friend yesterday, one of the best things about preaching is I feel close to God when I preach. I really do. And my prayer is when I preach today that you'll feel close to God too. And so if we have our Bibles, I know it's not going to be on the screen. So uh, if you have your Bible or a Bible app, you could download a Bible app. Uh, go to Leviticus chapter 16, verse 7, and the title of my message is, You Need a Scapegoat. Do You Need a Scapegoat is the title of my message. And so I like to give some background, some context, what was happening back then. All right, so this is 1,500 years before Christ. So we're going back in history. Does anybody here like history? Whether you, you like it or not, I'm going to give you a history lesson. And so, before Jesus, there was this place called the Holy of Holies. And so there was a curtain. Kind of, it didn't look like this, but there was a curtain. And behind that curtain was the presence of God. And only one person was allowed to go there once a year. It was the high priest. And his name's Aaron. And so Aaron, to go back to meet with God... He had to be clean so he would get baptized or he would wash his body. Of course, the washing of your body is not going to clean you. It'll clean your body physically, but it can't really cleanse you of your sins. And so he was required to present a, a bull sacrifice. And so he, they would sacrifice animals back then. I know that's I'm not trying to offend any animal rights lovers here. But that's what happened back then. They would sacrifice a bull. And they would also sacrifice goats. They had two goats that needed to be sacrificed before Aaron could present himself before the Lord. And another thing he had to do, he had to confess his sins before he met with God. See, just because he's a priest doesn't make him perfect. There's no perfect pastor there's no perfect rabbi. There's no pa perfect priest. You know, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody sins. So even Aaron had to confess his sins, not just for himself, for, 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 for his family. So you, you, you'll start praying to God, God, forgive me for what I did this week, for what I did this year. I'm sorry. Because if he went behind the curtain and he had sin in his life, he would die in the presence of God. That's pretty scary. So he had to make sure he, he confessed all his sins, and he had to confess the sins of others. And God, please forgive the nation of Israel, because they have sinned. They have committed an adultery. They have worshipped false gods. They have lied. They have stolen. So he would start, like, confessing a lot of sin. That probably took all day. <laughs> and so... That leads us to Leviticus chapter 16, verse 7. If you could go there, I'd appreciate it. I was going to use my son's iPad. I was like, just like, is your iPad this morning? Let's see. We get, but there's no internet service. <laughs> Thank God I have an old-fashioned Bible. <laughs> okay, Leviticus chapter 16, verse Seven. Aaron must take the two male goats to present them to the Lord at the entrance of the tabernacle. He is to cast a sacred lot to determine which goat will be reserved as an offering to the Lord and which one will carry the sins of the people to the, to the wilderness of Azaz. Aaron will then present a, a sin offering the goat chosen by the lot of the Lord. The other goat, the scapegoat, chosen by the lot to be sent away and will be kept alive, standing before the Lord. When it's sent away to Azaz in the wilderness, the people will be purified and made right before God. Let me pray. Father God, I just thank you for this message that you've given me to share with your people. And I just pray you help us understand what you are saying to each of us. Amen. Amen. 
So it's late at night. I'm driving to L.A. to go live with my dad. My best friend Jody's in the car with me. And I go, Jody, I got to tell you a secret. He's like, what? You can tell me I'm your best friend. Hey, uh, we're driving a stolen car. What? We're driving a stolen car. Yeah, man. It's a tag job, man. I, I, I bought it. It's stolen. He's like, you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. It's a stolen car. And he's like, oh, man. And so fast forward, we're in L.A. And we're driving. It's 5 o'clock traffic. And I decide, you know what? Because Jody's late to like a, a job interview. I want to be late to the interview. So I get into the emergency lane. You've never done that before. No. I guess I'm in the boat by myself this morning or this afternoon. So I'm in the emergency lane because I want to weave through the traffic. And so my friend's out late to his job interview. So I'm going through the emergency lane. And what do you know? I see the beautiful lights in the rear view mirror. You know what those beautiful lights are. I'm getting pulled over by a cop. I'm like, oh. And I know I'm in deep trouble because I'm Mexican. And so they pull me out first. I'm like, they treated me differently. They put me in the cop car. Jody gets to sit in the side and wait. And, and so I'm like, all right, whatever. But I was driving the car, so I get it. So I'm in the back of the cop car. I'm scared. And I, and I, I know what I did was wrong. And I'm not even praying at this moment. I'm just saying, but Jody, I didn't even know he's praying for me. He's like, God, help, help Jose. I don't want him to go to jail. So the cop comes to me. He's like, you know this car is stolen, don't you? It is? I just played the role. Really? Yeah, it's a stolen vehicle. Uh, so he, he, said, he gave us a break. He's like, I'm going to drop you guys off at the bus station. Your, your car is going to be impounded, but you need all the paperwork tomorrow. Meet me at the office tomorrow with all your paperwork. So you know what Jody and I did? We hit Dodge. We came back to Sacramento. Have you ever needed a scapegoat? Were you ever like, like in over your head and you're like, oh God, you, you need to save me. You need to come through. You need to help me. This is what Aaron is doing. You got to help me and my family. You got to help my country. We have all sinned before a holy God. None of us is worthy to go behind the curtain to meet with you today. Even, the, even offering animals isn't good enough. I'm, I'm too scared to meet with you, God. If I go back there, I might die. Are you ready to meet with God? If you're ready to meet with God, you've got to be ready to meet a holy God. If you're to describe God in one word, that would be the word I would describe God. Holy. I guess the next word I would say is magnificent. And the third word to describe God is compassionate. So we serve a holy, magnificent, compassionate God. And the way God showed his compassion for you and for me is by providing a sacrifice. So Aaron had to get the, the scapegoat, and he had grabbed the goat by its head. Visualize that you're there, just for a moment. How do you hold a, a goat for that long? And so he had to hold the goat's head for hours and start confessing the sins. Uh, God, forgive us for for lying. God, forgive us for stealing. God, forgive us for um, having an affair. Forgive us, God, for, uh, you know, dancing nasty at the dance club. God, for forgive us, God, for getting drunk. God, forgive us for looking at that girl inappropriately. God, so he was going on for a long time, talking to this goat, but praying. And so the goat was the scapegoat. The goat was taking the sins of the people. And so then they, they released the goat to the wilderness. It, it, was, it was symbolic of God removing the sins of the people. God removing your sin. God removing our sin away. Amazing. You might say, oh, Pastor Jose, I don't sin. I'm perfect. I could prove in one minute that you are not perfect, that you have sinned. Maybe you never stole, maybe you never bought a stolen car, but I can prove in one minute that you have sinned before a holy God. I want everybody to stand just for one minute. Just 
won't take long. I'm going to prove in less than one minute that you're a sinner just like me. We're, we're, we're playing this, this game, last man standing, or last woman standing. All right, sit down if you have never lied. Sit down if you have never lied. If you never lied, if you, if you, if you never lied. All right, if you have lied, sit down. If you have lied in your life, sit down. Whoa. That's just one of the commandments. I didn't get to talk about, have you ever dishonored your parents? Have you ever had anger in your heart? <laughs> have you ever used God's name in vain? Um, have you ever had an idol or put anything before the Lord? Have you ever neglected the Sabbath? Have you ever coveted, wanted something that didn't belong to you? A person that didn't belong to you? A, a thing that didn't belong to you? See, we all broken one of the Ten Commandments. So we all need a scapegoat. We all need a savior. But I got good news for you. I got great news for you. This Easter, we have a scapegoat in the Lord Jesus Christ. He became our scapegoat. So when we go to Jesus, we find the forgiveness of sins. Can I hear it? Amen. amen. When you say amen, you're saying, I agree with you, Pastor. Amen. Let it be done. Kimber Josiah, he's going to be Jesus just for a minute. I know he's a young Jesus. And so the Bible says that during Good Friday, they took off his shirt. Jesus was pretty much, some scholars think he was nude. But I hope that the Roman soldiers at least allowed him to have his chonies on. Uh, but the, the, the Roman soldiers, they ain't playing around. They had this thing called the cat of nine tails. No, it wasn't a kitty cat, and they start spanking Jesus with a kitty cat. It, it was a figure of speech because each of the tails of the whip had sharp, like, metal, a sharp metal object at the, at the end of each of the tails. And so they'll hit Jesus. Ah. Ah. <laughs> And they did this at least 39 times. It was torture. He almost bled to death when he was getting whipped, whipped 39 times. But he took that pain for you and for me. And it has been said that each time he got whipped, pieces of skin came off. Because the metal objects would grab to the skin and tear it loose. The, the Bible says that he was unrec unrecognizable afterward. After he got whipped so many times in the face, throughout the body, you, he's so disfigured, you could even barely recognize it was the Lord Jesus. But the Roman soldiers weren't done yet. They wanted to mock him, and they put a crown of thorns ah! on his head. Ah! They put a crown of thorns on his head. And then they started making fun of him. Hail Jesus, King of the Jews! And then they decided that they were going to kill this king. Because there could be only one king in Rome, and that was Caesar. And they were going to accept this king. So the Bible says that they nailed him to the cross. And he laid on that cross for at least three hours, suffering became our scapegoat. He was suffering for your sins, for all the sins, all the, the secret sins. Now, I was talking about the secret sin that nobody knew about, but my friend Jody at the time. We all have secret sins, don't we? Jesus died for your secret sins. And for, for three hours, he was in pain. And after the third hour, the Bible says he gave up his spirit and said, It is finished! And he died. Give it up for Jesus. When he said he it is finished, it's done. I completed the work. I became the goat sacrifice. I became, Jesus became the greatest sacrifice. We don't have to sacrifice animals anymore. All you animal animal right lovers say, Amen. 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 
I know Sherry's the biggest animal right lover here. Uh, she loves her animals. She has a bird. Uh, I want to get a cat someday. She keeps saying no. <laughs> and she has a, a dog. But so Jesus, King of the Jews, died not just to save the Jews, but to save all people groups. God's not racist. He loves all nationalities. He died for the Jews, for the Mexicans, the blacks, the whites, the Filipinos. You name the nationality. He died for all people once and for all. We read here in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So the high priest fell short of God's glory. I fall short of God's glory. We have all fall, fallen short of the glory of God. One of my favorite passages in the Bible is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Another translation for the word believe is to trust. Like you, you trust that chair you're sitting in right now. Otherwise, you wouldn't sit that in. You wouldn't sit in that chair if you, it was wobbly, if, if it only had uh, three legs. You would not sit in that chair. But to put your trust in Jesus, say, God, I trust that you died for me. You got to take it personal. He didn't just die for the world. He died for me. He died for you. John 1, 12 says this, But to all who receive him, who believe in his name, he gave right to become children of God. So when you put your faith in Jesus and you receive him into your life, you become a child of God. And we have some children today that are going to get baptized. I believe God's doing something here at this church. Sometimes he speaks through children. Does he not? Yes. And we got to humble our, ourselves like a child. If we want to come to know God, we got to say, God, I don't have it all together. I am a sinner. I am broken. I need forgiveness. I need Jesus. 1 Corinthians 15, 4 says this, And he was buried and rose on the third day according to what is written in the Bible, what's written in the Holy Scriptures. See, God's not done writing yet. We're a part of his story. God has a beautiful plan for your life, and the most important plan he has for your life is for you to come to know him as personal Lord, Savior, and friend. He wants to be your friend. It's been said Christianity, Christianity is not a religion. It's a personal relationship with God. Do you have a personal relationship with God? How is your relationship with God? We can have a good relationship with God through Jesus Christ, the Bible says. Romans 10, 9, if we, or if you, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. What does that mean, Pastor? It means that we're saved from death. Just as Jesus died and came back to life, one day you will die and you're promised eternal life if you put your faith in Jesus Christ. But one day you got to confess him as Lord. You got to say, Jesus, you are Lord. There, were, there only could be one king. There could be only one Lord. And there's really only one Savior. And the word confess means to speak, to agree, to open one's mouth and declare. Just like the high priest had to confess his sins to the goat, we got to confess our sins to Jesus and say, Jesus, I'm sorry for what I did. Please forgive me. And that's what I did. I was like, God, I'm sorry for buying a stolen vehicle. I promise never to do that again. Please forgive me. So I, I wrote a letter to the judge. And I got this letter back from the judge that same year. Dear Mr. Ochoa, the Honorable George H. Lewis judge has reviewed your case and rules as the follows. The above case is dismissed in the interest of justice. The above case is finished with no further proceeding. God provided a, a scapegoat for me. Hallelujah. I'm here to say that God has provided a scapegoat for you. 
God has provided a scapegoat for you Amen. through the Lord Jesus Christ. All, he, all you have to do now is confess him as Lord and believe it in your heart that God raised him to life on the third day and you will be saved. We read in Leviticus 16.10. If I get the worship team back here, I'm just about done. When the scapegoat is sent away to Azal in the wilderness, the people will be purified and made right before the Lord. Did you hear that? Yes. When the scapegoat is sent away to Azal in the wilderness, the people will be purified and made right before the Lord. Perhaps... God is sending the scapegoat your way. He's saying, take Jesus. He loves you. One thing I learned about God, he loves me despite all my failures, despite all my hangups, despite all my transgressions, despite all the times I've sinned before a holy God, God still is there for me to forgive me. He has provided me Jesus He's provided all of us a scapegoat. Amen? Amen. So my kids, the other day, we went to the Angels game. And so I, I brought my glove because I wanted to catch a foul ball. <laughs> and the kids had their, their glove, too. And so, uh, no, I think there's a, some foul balls that got hit our way. But one time, uh, I didn't know this, but in the major leagues, if you get hit, if the ball gets hit really hard, they can't use it anymore. And so the players, what they'll do is they'll, they'll throw the ball into the stands. And so Josiah had his glove, and the ball came so close to him, he almost caught it. But another teenager caught it with his bare hands. Mm. And when he got the ball, he got so excited, like, yeah! Ah! He got so excited, all his friends were cheering him. He was so excited that he had a ball. I'm here to say that when we have Jesus in our life, there's a reason to get excited. I am forgiven of my sins. I'm going to heaven. I'm no longer going to hell. I'm going to be with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, forever, for eternity. My sins are forgiven. God, when I die someday, God's not going to say, oh, remember that stolen car you, you bought? No, it's covered by the blood of Jesus. All of my sins have been covered by the blood of Jesus. Lord. All of your sins have been covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen. All you have to do is believe and accept Jesus Christ as your scapegoat. Accept him as your, your friend, your personal Lord and Savior. Could you stand? I'd like to pray for you. You could bow your head, bow your heads, and close your eyes. You're saying, Jose, I need a scapegoat. I would like to have Jesus in my life. I want him to be, a, be my Lord and Savior. If that's you, raise your hand. I'd like to pray for you. If you'd like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need a scapegoat, you need a friend. We find that in him. Let's, let's say this prayer together as one family. Dear God, thank you for Easter Sunday. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sin and overcoming death on the third day. Would you be my scapegoat? Would you be my savior? Would you be my friend? Teach me your ways. Fill me with your spirit. I love you and bless you. Amen. If you mean that with your heart, know that you have God in your life now. You are now a child of God.